Hello everyone, this is a personal YouTube reading order number 1435. I'm keeping your name um, hidden because you asked me for it. And the first question you ask if you need to change your name for your spiritual practice. And actually you have to and maybe not so much. Maybe you can add just a few letters to the beginning or to the end. Or remove a letter or something like that. Like nothing special, like nothing crazy. But your name doesn't really like works well with darkness and underworld so definitely good question to ask and i do recommend you my beautiful wish to change your name for sure and first of all i want to i want to express my gratitude to you because you've been such an amazing um i can't even say fun you are you are also a practitioner like me so you've been watching my channel you've been commenting like always so much support coming from you thank you so much and like literally the moment i saw that you order my YouTube reading, the first thing I I actually like suspected that it was you because I remember your name on your YouTube channel and I was so excited. And thank you so much for letting me know that this is you and for getting reading from me because it's such a pleasure for me to read for you Um, because you're already having your own YouTube channel and you're doing your thing and you have such an amazing questions. So I'm very excited to do reading for you and I love your energy. From day one, I think I saw your first comment, I already liked it, and I felt like so much strong energy coming from you. So um, the only thing that I'm not excited for is just you mentioned that you're not doing fine at the moment, like you're not feeling well, and it makes me sad. So I hope maybe this reading is going to help you to shed some light on your current situation or just like bring a sm smile to your face. But I'm so excited, honestly, and I hope you're going to feel better and everything going to become better because you deserve the best. So first I will be starting with your palms. And as usual, I will be starting with your right palm because right palm is the destiny palm. So I want to see like what's going on there. And the first thing that stood out to me is how amazing and like beautiful the aura and the energy that's coming from your palm. It's like such a healing, soothing energy. It's so like uh, soft and smooth like a water. Maybe like the color even represents your uh, color of your aura because your colors like on your aura they change it all the time but like they have such an amazing like um, rainbow colors that change soft colors and they're different like sometimes when I was looking for you like a few times I think uh, uh, preparing to the reading and they were always different but always beautiful colors so the first thing I want to tell you that you of course a born witch Probably you know that because you're already practicing. You're a seer, so you're supposed to do readings for people. And not only for collective, you're supposed to do readings, like personal readings. And you're supposed to do, like, practice magic. And your power comes from the darkness. And I'm glad that you're already in the darkness. Like, you're looking into it and you're still, like, kind of confused and new to it. It's quite all right because you figure out all the things. Because you are protected and highly guided there, honestly. You have the mark of this like middle touch so you're supposed to practice and you're supposed to make money from spiritual and occult you're supposed to become famous in this you're supposed to be a celebrity so your your youtube channel is supposed to grow you're supposed to have like a lot of subscribers a lot of people watching you and a lot of clients coming to you eventually and this is i think the only reason that it's not happening like crazy crazy now uh, because you have this line that kind of like stops the progress and i know you have like a you have a few questions for me and one of the questions was is there like some pattern that you are kind of um, doing on yourself and you are you kind of like still you you're an amazing person you know you you kind of person that cannot harm anyone that you always think for others like you always think like ahead like if your actions are gonna hurt someone or not and because of that, you still kind of stop in your progress because the path that you're embarking on is supposed to be a very selfish path. This is supposed to be something only for you. So no one's supposed to be there. You're not supposed to care about anyone else. It's a selfish journey of self-discovery, selfish journey of helping people. If you cannot help yourself, there is no way you can help anyone else. And this is the time for you to actually acknowledge that, that this is the time that you solemnly is supposed to be concentrating on yourself otherwise all of this like good things that's supposed to be given to you will never happen when it comes to darkness like here you have you actually have 
for Morgana Rings, you have in your past lives you had four relationships with demons, so you still have kind of like past uh, lovers, like demons coming to you in this lifetime because for them the kind of concept of time doesn't exist like for us humans. So this what makes your love life the craziest one, like the difficult ones, because these demons they cannot let you go honestly, and this what's kind of like messes up everything. When it comes to your love line, um, by the destiny, there is only one person given to you. One person. You're supposed to have two children. They're supposed to come to this person, not to you. So it is important for you to find this person in this lifetime. When it comes to your left palm, I see that... Uh, I feel that you kind of made a mistake you fell in love with the wrong person it was a serious relationship and because of that you kind of like moved the correct person the right one your soulmate further away to the future and sometimes we do that because you see your left palm is not really like your right palm you don't follow your destiny much because you are manifesting a lot of things as you go you are free um free spirit uh like you have this you know, wilderness in you, this rebellious side of you. But sometimes you don't listen to it and you make it um, kind of like you push it push it away from you because you want to be like a good person. You want to kind of be good with your family. Your family doesn't affect you whatsoever. The, you, I think you asked me why you struggle with your family. You struggle with your family because this is not your soul family. Your soul chose this reincarnation because... It was a good timing for you to reincarnate. It was, you know, people like you gifted ones. You reincarnate when you feel it's right to come. And it was perfect timing, but it wasn't perfect family. So that's what I'm saying for you in this lifetime. Like now, especially now, it's important to realize that no one stands between you and your success, but only you. You are your biggest enemy at the moment because you still think about family. You still think about other people. And that's your pattern. I'm not saying that you're supposed to be a bad human being or to just like not talk to everyone. It's just they have no hold on you. It's not important what they think about what you do or who you are, what kind of person you are. You're supposed to seek independence. You're supposed to seek knowledge and you're supposed to realize how to be yourself fully. The move for you is important. For you, you have three different countries that you might of uh, your home and them in the future you're not supposed to live where you are because it's a uh, it's a place that actually affects you in a, in a kind of like negative way because here this is like on your part here it becomes this this is your physical location this is your physical body so it becomes like stagnation it becomes like it's like in growing um uh, like kind of like you know this like disease, you feel stuck, you feel low on energy, you feel unmotivated, you feel physically sick because you're not supposed to be there. This is not your right surroundings. This is not where you are, your tribe. So you will have to move. There's three possibilities for you in the future. So whichever country you choose, it's going to be fine. But the choices are coming soon. I think one of the countries already on your mind, one of the countries uh, you heard of and you felt like attracted to, and one of the countries is completely new. It's still not on your mind. When it comes to your gifts and abilities, I want to go over your left hand because this is like your, um, the one that is more active because you're practicing already. In, you actually were born as an indigo child. You had three crazy supernatural experiences in your childhood. All of them were neglected. No one saw it. No one um, actually like helped you with this. If you were vocal, probably you told something your parents or people around you, they just they just like try to like hush you, like don't tell, don't don't talk like that, this is crazy. And because of that, you kind of like stop seeing things that you saw when you were a child. Now you come into this part of your life when everything is about to kind of come back to you, like fully these visions, because you're embracing your darkness. So this part of your palm, um, it represents the next year when you fully gonna come into your power. It's gonna be rapid change, like something like something crazy. 
if you have the opportunity to move now, um, if you have the opportunity to do drastic changes in your lifetime, in your life, uh, I would say do it. Like go for it. Uh, the universe is guiding you where you need to be. It's guiding you to to become who you are. Really, like less than one year, everything's supposed to happen for you. You have um, a lot of entities that are standing next to you. Like every every like line on your palm is so significant it represents a soul you don't really have anyone from your bloodline working with you because you're different it's like your ancestors they don't like your soul because you are like an intruder to the family so no ancestors are willing to work with you but because of that you are open more to uh, different deities the first deity that is working with you is hades so he is the god of the underworld, and when I was looking for you in the underworld, he was holding your hand there. So he's the one who invited you there. So if you have any connection with him, uh, like personally as a human, if you want to work with him, I would say start by creating like an altar for him and doing readings, even for people, but like a message from Hades, for example. Another deity there uh, with you is Artemis or Artemida. She is the goddess of wisdom. She's the goddess, like she was called um, um, mother of dragons. So she is the unusual one. She came uh, not from Earth, from somewhere else. So it's kind of like represents your own soul that is not really earthly. So you have connection with astrology, you have connection with stars, planets, they affect you greatly. So you have to use it in your occult practice as well you have to do it for people you can become an amazing astrologer you feel planets you feel the change you feel how moon affects you and others you're so connected to nature in the most incredible way you can talk to animals you can sense spirits around you so the more you acknowledge them the more you work with them the better when it comes to demonic presence the four guardian demons that you have, the names are supposed to be kept secret. So let's, um, like, you're supposed to find out their names because this is the biggest secret that you've ever, like, every witch possesses is the names of your guardian demons. Those are the ones that've been in love with you. They're still in love with you, so they can help you with anything you want because their love is real. If, if you won't be able to find their names, but I think I really suggest you to spend at least like one month looking for their names. And probably the ones that you like the most and you feel con like attracted the most, those are the ones. If you're going to get stuck, like let me know. I'll find the names for you, but only if you can yourself. Because this is the biggest secret you're supposed to have in your life. The names of your demons. Uh, your children are still supposed to be there for you if you choose to have your kids in this lifetime. But because they're not coming to you, because they're coming to your partner, your legacy for your children your child supposed to be your account practice so your channel the books that you're going to write the courses that you're going to make the people that you're going to help they will spread out the legacy about you so for you in this lifetime it's not about having normal life or being married or having kids it's all about you practicing and I think you already subconsciously know that because you even mentioned it in your question for people like you normal life doesn't exist that's why it's so hard to fit in. That's why it's so hard to find your soulmate. That's why it's so hard to even be with your family sometimes, you know, because no one gets you. You have a purpose. You need to help and guide people. And you have everything that it takes to do that. So for you, because you're already practicing, it's just the last missing link to uncovering this like crazy potential that you have it's just to believe so greatly in this and to just go there like crazy like no boundaries nothing like fully just dive in no regrets nothing and then it's all gonna come to a place you are a dark witch you are an ancient witch you've been practicing for so many centuries you have the demonic ladder on your palm you protect it no negative entities can come to you. No one can hex or harm you. You will never be um, under the influence of magic. Like no other witch can hex you or harm you. So don't be scared of practicing. Um, you have here 
uh, it's called the eye on the uh, or the stigma the, of the underworld or the eye of the underworld so you see into the underworld so when you do messages or readings for people you actually can see uh, people who passed away uh, demons gods deities anything that's in underworld you are able to see it and i think you already know it uh, you have these messages that come into you have visions but i feel sometimes you just ignore them because you don't believe that this is real you still questioning yourself a lot you still have this like human boundary sometimes you're scared to say crazy things uh, because you feel like people may be not ready but go there more be yourself don't hold yourself back there is so much in you that you still haven't like realized yet um also you have a mark of the oracle like the oracle uh, star so you've been an oracle of delphi in one of your past lives also you've been an oracle in um, ancient mesopotamia in one of the temples you've been divining future for the the emperor of that era like the king of that era uh, he used to keep you in his garden like you had a like a house and a place where you did your divinations and a rose garden that's why i'm having like dry rose for you as an offering to the soul that you had like to this reincarnation and for you working with flowers is important like having fresh flowers around you it's something that reminds your soul of your divine origin so always have flowers in your space and the underworld is open uh, demons already with you you don't have to um, do any type of like invocations or like portal openings they're there you just have to acknowledge them and talk to them and eventually you will see them it's a natural process um, with time everything will come and just keep doing what you're doing honestly and for you the key is to have people who are like in person people who are present physically in front of you because this is going to be the easiest way for you to practice and to read for them you need to start learning how to interpret the energy of the person you need to look into their eyes you have to establish a portal between you and the person in front of you so the more people who are in front of you you get uh, the better your abilities will uh, kind of unfold in front of you so the more clients you have the better practice uh, do rituals for yourself uh, in ancient egypt priests used to do rituals for gods uh, and for the god of the temple and for the god of the land for demons of the land and for themselves as well so the last ritual offering would be for them so you have to do offerings for yourself for your soul it's like every day you have to acknowledge that you are of divine origin that you're an oracle you're a seer you're a witch you have a connection with the underworld you are special and unique and by doing this routine of offering to yourself like something beautiful flowers maybe buy something like nice for yourself if you want something um but even doing like some kind of spell work for yourself to become more beautiful or to attract money or to attract um a person in your life like your soulmate you will acknowledge yourself more connect more with your higher self connect more with your divine essence because you're missing this like i feel like self-love you don't love yourself you're not crazy about yourself and i don't know why because you're an amazing like you're an amazing person human see your witch you should be like in love with yourself first and then everyone will be in love with you as well and for the question that you have the questions i will use tarot this is an interesting deck it's um it's the deck that has uh, images from 16th 17th century so i hope it's gonna help us to answer your questions and let's start with the first question because you asked me about clarity on your spiritual path uh, if you do any changes or change locations and i said that you're supposed to change locations so that's for sure that's in your palms and if you're supposed to do any changes on your spiritual path let's see oh wow <laughs> 
So um, you do suppose to do changes because you've mastered whatever it is you've been doing. So you're amazing at this. And there is time to learn something new. So first of all, the hanged man, uh, for me, it represents the learning process, something new. So when I see this card, the first thing I always say or comes to me is the rooms and mediumships. So cast something. Uh, when it comes to rooms, if you don't feel connected with rooms, I would say you can cast bonds or charms. This is something interesting because it's not really tarot and something unusual. You can try candle wax readings um, if you haven't done this before. And definitely learn something that you can do with your hands. So it's like very physical, something that you need to change. Um, alignment and page of majors tells me that you're supposed to work on your dark side, dark magic, working with demons, talking to demons, embracing dark entities. You have a lot of dark shadows standing around you. And they're not negative. Those are the ones who doesn't really help you. They, they're just there. I think the, those are the like souls of um, other demons who passed away. So they have messages for you. So use them to deliver a message for people or even to deliver a message for you. So definitely it's a yes. You even have major arcana here. So definitely change something in your practice and your spiritual path. Uh, I'm going to ask... Maybe you pull two more cards to see if there is like something specific they are telling me that you should change. So like literally, three of mages. So magic, uh, especially dark magic, like darker aspects of magic. Like, I think you understand what, I'm, what I mean, uh, but not, not harming anyone, not like no sacrificing anything or anyone or anything. So it's just... The darkness, like working with demons, working with the dark side of you. Six of Shikina tells me that uh, the religion, it usually represents connection with the religion. It should stay. So uh, whatever it is you believe, uh, they're fine. They're not going to like mess with your practice or with your, part, uh, with your path. So if you want to work with angels, for example, also work with them. But you have to incorporate dark angels as well. Not only the most well-known ones, but also fallen ones as well. And I think this is the major one here is like something physical and the magic. So do some kind of spells for your clients. Maybe incorporate them in your store um, and on your social media as well. Rituals, spells, anything that you like, or even like sharing information about magic will do as well. Uh, you ask me why you struggle with your family and your love relationship. I'm still going to ask. Uh, first of all, I'm going to ask why you struggle with your family, even though I think it's, the, it's because you don't really belong to them. But I'm still going to see what the car is going to say. Yeah, to me it represents, like, like I said, because you... They're not really your family. And you see in this card, like the only card that is upright, Seven of Shekinah. This is what represents your family the most. Like you, Seven is for seeking. So you have to seek your family. And your family is not, you know, it, it is physical, but it's also angels. It's also like, like demons, people who passed away. Your family is supposed to be a supernatural first because they understand you there with you and also people who are like you people who are practicing people who are like me people who are understand what you're going through no judgment no complicating your life and people who understand what you're going through on a daily basis this is your family then you ask why you struggle with your love relationship i'm also curious to see what the car is going to tell you Mm, the car is still saying that you're still going to struggle with your love relationship. So prepare for this. And um, you mentioned that you're already dating someone, but it's the things are weird. And I think the main reason why the first thing that I see from this is because you're still not dating someone special. 
you some you're supposed to date the high priest you're supposed to date someone like you you're supposed to date someone who understands you gets you who practices well um you cannot date anyone normal you cannot date anyone who is not as crazy unique and powerful as you are and that's the reason why you still struggle the struggle gonna be there unless you're gonna change the person that you're dating i think there is a pattern and it's like you know you're gonna feel when you change maybe you have to like try more things like connect more to your darkness change a little bit yourself like understand your power more connect your power more and then when the right person comes you're gonna see him because even now if you find someone new it's because you don't even know the extent of your power because you don't know how crazy dark you are how crazy powerful you are you are not gonna see your reflection in another person it's like when it comes to this like real soulmate it's like for me it feels like when you're looking into a mirror and you see yourself like your own reflection as long as you're still the same in the same spot doing the same thing and nothing changing you're still gonna date the same guy if it makes sense so you first you need to change first you need to move you need to like change your practice you need to learn more and then the high priest will come so literally for me you are waiting for the high, the high priest for someone special darker but more powerful than you someone who can teach you not the other way around because in every previous relationship you were the powerful one you were the teacher you were the guy sometimes you felt like your mother it's uh it's like you were put in the relationship i don't think that anyone that you had before truly deserved you and i want you to find someone that is not only deserving of you but it's also will lead you somewhere where you need to go someone who actually going to be able to help you not the other way around and i feel this is the main reason why even dating now it's not going to work because it's kind of the same person if you feel something's off in the beginning it's just going to become like worse and worse with time I know that you ask that this is like a part of your spiritual journey. A lot of spiritual workers, they're lonely because they can't find someone special. I'm going to ask the cards if this is your case because I know a lot of practitioners who are like happily married or happily dating someone or they've been like with someone for like uh, 10, 20 years. So it's case by case. Not everyone's supposed to like struggle to find love. And there is a lot of spiritual gifted people out there, like of all genders and different practices. It's just sometimes it's the timing or the, the place or you not being ready. So I'm asking the cards if you are supposed to be lonely all your life as a part of your spiritual journey of being a practitioner. I'm so happy <laughs> the cards are saying no. Not only no, uh, they're only saying the hermit reverse. You're not supposed to be a hermit. You're not supposed to be like a single woman. No, you are supposed to be with someone when you reach this like stage of eight of mages. And, uh, and in the bottom of the deck is Ace of Alchemy. So it's like another like confirmation. So the moment you start something fresh, because aces are always beginnings, right? Uh, you will meet this person. And also, Eight of Mages, to me, represents um, abundance coming from your magical practice. So the moment you will be making so much money that you're truly independent and you can live whenever you want and you can do whatever you want, this is well when everything else will fall in place for you. So doing your occult job is the only thing that you have, is the key for you. And when you are independent established when you move everything will fall in place and the high priest will come so i'm really really glad that this is not part of your of your course as a spiritual worker to be by yourself uh, another question mm, you know sometimes when you practice and you feel um this loneliness or void i think it's just because 
your practice is not still entirely like blooming in front of you there is not enough people yet to know about you not a lot of people to give you this like daily fulfillment when you become like so busy with your practice that you become happier because you are supposed to practice you're supposed to help people you're such a gifted soul and the more busy you become the better you feel and still maybe you're not yet busy enough for you to feel this fulfillment and when you you need to kind of learn how to love yourself as well so i really really recommend to you do some kind of affirmations on yourself like every day uh, maybe like get a sigil for beauty sigil for self-love sigil for coming into your power and place it everywhere in your home and always look at it like as a reminder that you're so powerful gifted and so unique and special and this is your confirmations that you're supposed to love yourself and understand how unique you are and um, there are entities to work with i'm going to pull a few cards to see if there's like any other suggestions behind the ones uh because in the lines i told you there are specific lines that represent Hades and Artemis that are already working with you. I want to see if the card is going to send someone your way. Okay, interesting. So, uh, Lucifer, Baphomet, and uh, Belzebub. Those are the three demons that you have to start acknowledging and working with at the moment because they are active around you. So those three are the ones who kind of with you at the moment and the ones that you need to be working with more closely because they're not only contacting you, they are with you. Which is amazing, honestly, the, the main ones. But I'm not surprised for such a queen as you, of course. Who else? I prefer the candle box reading for you, of course, roses and flowers. And the silver, uh, silver candle, because silver for me represents the beauty of a witch, like connecting with the moon, the darkness, and that's the color I like to use the most for witches. And to see what kind of message is going to come during this candle box. Okay, the first thing that comes to me in the beginning, like, uh, water is not really your element. So when you do spell work or any type of like manifestations and rituals, use more earth, crystals, uh, money, um, anything physical that you can touch, but not water. You kind of still blind when it comes to water, so maybe even mm, avoid it a little bit. Uh, it's like too emotional. I think water kind of picks up your energy and because you don't feel good, it also reflects something negative during your practice as well. Maybe don't even keep water on your altar for a little while. It doesn't mean that water is not your element or you cannot use it. It's just like for now, for the next month, for example. Okay. You have a lot of questions on your mind, like a lot of questions of different uh, interesting questions like human origin, uh, underworld, darkness, demons, like people. So many things on your mind, so many things that you are curious about, so many things that you want to know and really fast. Sometimes you don't have patience for uh, things to come naturally, but you have to be patient. If you will get answers sooner that they're meant to find you, you might get scared and unmotivated, so be patient. Everything will come. You are doing everything right. You are on the right path. And the things that you already achieved are amazing. It's like you've done such a great job of becoming who you truly are. And you still keep growing as a person. And everything will be given to you. Everything will come your way. Happiness is on your way for sure. I, I see it there.
it's so interesting you will find your like how to call it like soul family there's going to be in the nearest future so many different people coming to you people that you would never consider your friends before people who would you never be able to like start a conversation they will come to you they will find you it's like you will be guided to a place where the magic is will be happening for you it's like uh so many good emotions like beautiful emotions persephone she's the goddess uh, the queen of the underworld she's the one who actually really really wants to work with you so i think you kind of like like even the way you look like the way you speak and talk like you have like similar vibe And I guess judging by how much fire is going on in this candle box, I guess you understand that fire is your strongest element at the moment. So that's what you should use more in your um, rituals and practice. When you start working with the darkness, with the underworld, with dark deities, dark demons, always have a candle on your table. Doesn't matter what color or shape, the fire should be there always. They show in that you will have a straight uh, white road, like a path. The moment you will start questions, uh, you will start like idea about the move or when you decide to have a crazy change in your life, they're going to show you like such an amazing road, such an amazing like escape or a path to take and it will be easy for you. There is a lot of changes coming to your life, like crazy changes. You see how like all of this on fire and the candle on fire? This is my regular candle. It's never behaves like this. So when I see so much fire and we're talking about you accessing the underworld, this is something that might feel overwhelming. Uh, too much to take in, probably you're still scared, but they are waiting for you to enter. They just, they know you're coming, but this is like the last step is yours. It's like, it's becoming <laughs> so dramatic, so crazy. Um, like, the, the fire doesn't even stop. They are waiting for you to enter. So they have so much to tell you, so much to show you. They are ready to receive you there. You just need you just need to realize that you want to go there, that you want to be part of the underworld, that you want to accept your abilities, accept your calling, that you want to understand that this is your this is your power and this is who you are for the rest of your life. You're supposed to go through an initiation, self-initiation by yourself. Night, midnight, from midnight to 3 a.m. Candles, uh, your own letter to the underworld that you're supposed to burn. Uh, accept the invitation, I would say. Just write on the paper, I'm accepting your invitation. I want to be there, I'm yours. Add anything you want, burn it and keep the ashes with you. Sigils are important for you because you are very visual when it comes to your magic. You like to see, you're very artistic. Sigils are the most easiest way, like a shortcut for you to connect with the underworld. 
and use them in your practice for sure. I don't know, I've never seen this like this. I'm having so much cold water there. And <laughs> this I always use uh, dried flowers in my candle wax. And it's still going on. It's like, um, it's never ending fire. It's like you, you're so expected and you will be so well received. They just can't wait for you to join them there. And this is crazy, honestly. There are many questions that will be answered very soon for you. The more you ask, the more guidance they will give you. There is so much happiness in the future, uh, but it starts now. You have to realize that this is just a part of your magical journey and everything is going to be better. It's, it's just you being still in some kind of um, routine, you know, you're stopping yourself from being happy. Because they want you to be happy. They want you to give everything you desire. Dream bigger. Because everything you wish for, they always come. Like they always give you. It's always come true. So uh, sometimes you are your own enemy. As with like a lot of practitioners, a lot of amazing people. We always find a way to just stop ourselves from receiving the blessings from the universe. You are like, you are the same. You don't feel that you're worthy sometimes, and because of that, you don't receive the full abundance that's supposed to come to you. Become selfish. This is the time to think only about you. They are welcoming you there. They wait for you. There's so many of them waiting for you. You are born to be the messenger from the underworld, like to deliver messages from them to us. And that's your best gift. I can recommend to you to use smoke crying because fire is so your element at the moment. I feel fire will calm you down and it brings you more power. I just want <laughs> I want the last fire to stop on its own, like naturally. And um You know, I'm so excited for you. Like, I'm watching this, and the energy that comes from this candle wax, like from this water, from the flowers, is just like extremely amazing. I feel there's so many good things coming to you. You will be blessed with so much abundance and love and friendships and like, you know, adventures and crazy things gonna come your way. And it's just like one step away from you. And the faster you will become yourself and acknowledge your power the faster they're all going to open for you. I think the more important message I want to tell you that you are on the right path. You are not even following your destiny, but you're doing everything that is correct, like perfectly. You are following your soul's destiny. And your soul is remembering so much. You can start reading past life regressions for others. You do have access to the Akasha records. You have access to the past lives for other people. And this is something that you might consider doing as well. This is the last fire. I want to see the bottom of the candle box. It's so thin. It's like you have literally no um, no obstacles on your path to darkness. Like see through. And almost all the flowers are there. To me, it tells me that the beauty of the darkness will reflect 
through your eyes. The moment you see it, you will become a changed person. Your inner witch is calling for an action and it's time to become who you are and it's time to embrace all of this madness, all of this craziness, all of this power that is still dormant in you. Go forward. Don't be scared of anything. You are a magnificent creature. You are the most beautiful soul out there. Believe in yourself and know and remember how special you are and everything will be amazing. You will be happy so soon and everything will change for you. Just keep moving. Thank you so much, my beautiful wish, for giving me this opportunity to read for you. And good luck with everything. I wish you all the happiness in the world. And may all your wishes and dreams come true.